Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great honor to be invited to speak to this distinguished gathering in this splendid palace. It's not as much of a pleasure as I would like, because as you know, the results of the efforts that uh, have been made on behalf of all of you over the last many years have not yet turned out to be satisfactory. There is a paper on the little uh, disc which you have in your materials, a paper written by Maurits Dolmans, my colleague, who will be here later this afternoon, and by me. I will not go through the points uh, in that paper one by one. <coughs> you all know the history, or the main events, uh, of the last uh, 30 years. First, the judgment of the European Court of Justice uh, in the AMNS case, saying, among other things, that uh, in-house uh, employed uh, lawyers should not have privilege in European Commission investigations. That finding was not what the Commission had proposed at the time, but it was confirmed by the Court of Justice again, uh, much more recently, as you all know, in the AXO uh, Nobel case. In that case, uh, I and various other lawyers who were involved in the case uh, made arguments based on the Charter of Fundamental Rights and, in my view at least, uh, the Charter is not fulfilled by the existing regime uh, resulting from the AXO case uh, because the uh, law is not sufficiently clear and clarity of the law uh, is required uh, as one of the uh, obligations of member states and of the European Union uh, by the Charter. I think that the decision in the actual case is unfortunate, but we're going to have to live with it at least for the time being, and I am suggesting to you this afternoon that several recent developments, which you probably know already, are tending in the right direction. The first of these, which is not very recent, uh, is the case uh, Robatin against Austria uh, in the European Court of Human Rights in Strasbourg. You remember that in that case uh, there had been a seizure of essentially all of the files of a lawyer uh, in his office and the court in Strasbourg said that that was uh, excessive, disproportionate and unjustified by the need to investigate certain particular uh, matters uh, in which it was said that the lawyer had been involved. The second development you also know about, I'm sure, the ruling of the Brussels Court of Appeal uh, in a case argued by a colleague of uh, mine uh, in Cleary Gottlieb, uh, arguing that uh, under Belgian national law, uh, national competition law, uh, in-house lawyers were entitled to uh, confidentiality and legal privilege. The Court of Appeal uh, upheld that view and that is certainly a step in the right direction even if it concerns only the situation under Belgian law. We have what I understand is a similar result, slightly different technicalities, uh, as a result of a, a judgment of the Hochrad uh, in the Netherlands uh, in a case uh, Delta, where again, under national competition law, the court said that uh, there was a privilege. I have limited time, and I want to make two uh, cautionary remarks and make some practical suggestions. The first cautionary remark is that there is still 
a serious disagreement between many of you, I think, and the European Commission over the question whether legal advice on legal issues not concerned or not directly concerned with competition law uh, should be privileged in Commission competition investigations. There is absolutely nothing in anything that has been said by the Court of Justice so far to suggest that privilege should be or could be uh, limited to competition cases. <coughs> but the problem is a serious one, or may become a serious one, because, as you know, uh, it may often happen that in giving legal advice on company law matters, labour law matters, tax matters, negotiation of joint venture agreements or licensing agreements, the lawyer writing the opinion may give some comments which are or might be thought to be relevant to competition law. It is extremely important that you should all be aware that the Commission takes the view that even uh, legal advice uh, on <coughs> tax, tax law or company law is not privileged. So you have to keep that sort of advice in separate files because you may have to argue about it uh, in due course and you should be able to argue as a matter of principle that uh, it is protected by legal privilege. <clears throat> the second precautionary comment that I want to make concerns uh, digitally stored information. This is already a serious problem for many lawyers it's already a serious problem uh, in many of, of your companies. And you have to recognize that there are uh, serious ambiguities and uncertainties in what the Commission says it is entitled to do uh, under European law and still more uh, ambiguities and uncertainties uh, in what uh, national competition authorities, at least in some member states, are uh, claiming uh, to be free to do. May I just tell you the story about one particular case uh, in a Swedish court which concerned an investigation by the Swedish competition authority in the course of which the authority had uh, taken copies of all of the database uh, of the companies concerned. And the company uh, went to the uh, commercial court uh, in Stockholm <coughs> and the judge, Judge uh, Simonsson, uh, decided that it was necessary for her to refer to Luxembourg uh, the question whether what had been done by the Swedish Competition Authority was permitted under uh, European law. I tell you the story because of what happened next. At that point, the Competition Authority said, well, uh, perhaps uh, in the circumstances uh, we will, we will uh, withdraw and we will reconsider uh, what we're claiming to be able to do. So the case was never sent to uh, Luxembourg. But I think we are going to get many more cases of situations in which uh, large databases have been uh, copied provisionally for inspection by competition authorities uh, in their own uh, offices. And you have to be ready to make claims for privilege. And, and this is my point, you should ensure that your company's databases are designed in such a way that all of the claims of privilege that you wish to make can easily be made by reference to identifiable groups or categories or folders of digitally stored uh, data. 
This is a big subject. I don't want to go on uh, any longer about it, uh, but I want to call it to your attention because it's intimately related in a practical way to the subject of uh, legal privilege. Now, my suggestions. These suggestions are not new to you. Some of you, many of you, I think, are already acting on them or on similar ideas. There is nothing in European Union law which uh, discourages or limits the powers of national parliaments to adopt legislation uh, establishing, if it's not already established, the profession of in-house company lawyer and granting explicitly, for the purposes of national law, uh, legal privilege uh, fully uh, as is given already uh, for uh, independent uh, practicing lawyers. In effect, this was what the Dutch legislation in the Axel case uh, already did. So the fact that in some countries there is legislation that produces this result does not solve the problem. <clears throat> but it's very important, I believe, that there should be a groundswell, uh, an increasingly widespread legislative consensus that uh, in-house uh, lawyers should benefit from uh, legal privilege. In order to make certain that that happens, I think some of you, in some countries at least, uh, may need to take certain steps that have not been taken at European level, uh, even by the CCBE, which in my view ought to have taken them. There should be an explicit recognition <coughs> that uh, it is uh, illegal and unprofessional to help a company to break the law and it is unprofessional and should be illegal to mislead a competition authority just as I think in all of our European countries uh, it is unprofessional and illegal uh, to mislead a, a court. So what I'm suggesting is what I think you're already working on, a model national law regulating your profession in all of the European Union uh, member states and conferring the rights uh, which you are claiming and which I hope we will be able to claim sometime in the fairly near future uh, before the European Court of Justice uh, once again. In the meantime, I hope that there will be a widening consensus that uh, privilege should be given and that that will uh, influence uh, the court uh, in Luxembourg uh, more than uh, it was influenced so far. Thank you for listening to me.